Well, it is wild to be back here, I have to say, after 30 years of not being here. Um, hasn't changed much, although the seats in the auditorium are much more comfortable, it looks like. At least that's good news for you, right? So I want to thank you for having me here today talking about abracadabra, realizing your dreams now, not someday. And it is true that every one of us has a dream. You know, when I was little, my dream was to be a pop star and to marry a tall, dark, handsome soulmate, have three children, specifically two boys and a girl, spend summers in Paris, have my own company, and make a difference for people. I didn't think that was too much to ask for, you know, but that was my sort of list of dreams. And if I ask you what your dream is, many of you could right away say what your dream is, and some of you may not be able to identify with your dream because you've given up on it. And a lot of us do give up on our dreams because we don't think we'll have the time or the money or the resources to fulfill on them. So we start settling for what looks doable versus what we really, really want. Jim Carrey uh, spoke at a graduation, and I don't, many, many of you may have seen the YouTube on this, but he said, so many of us choose our path out of fear disguised as practicality. And I think that rings true for many of us. You know, we might have a dream or a vision, but then we don't know how to get there. We don't know how to accomplish it. We think we don't know who we need to know or have what we need to have in order to accomplish it. So we just settle for something else. When I was five years old, I was sitting with my dad in our 1968 Chevy Impala convertible. And that is actually myself and my father right there. Um, and I remember he used to paint. And he had stopped painting, and I asked him, you know, why'd you stop painting? And he said, well, you know, you can't do your dream as your career. And in that moment, I decided that was the truth. You can't do your dream as your career. So even though my dream was to be a singer, I figured, well, I guess I'll never be able to do that. So I'll go into business, or I'll be a lawyer, or I'll do something where I can get a steady paycheck, and I'll keep my singing as a hobby, you know, to fulfill that dreamer part of me. And you know, I spent you know, my whole life pretty much proving that it was true you don't do your dream as your career and seemed very reasonable. But in 1989, I was in a seminar and I had this insight. And I don't know if you've ever been sitting in a, in a room full of people and they're talking and all of a sudden you see something about your life. And what I saw was that maybe the decision you don't do your dreams as your careers wasn't the truth. Maybe it was just a decision that I made in the infinite wisdom of five and then spent a lifetime proving true, so I really believed it. And in that moment of seeing it not as the truth, but as a possible view, it loosened its grip on me. And I started to see it as a possibility again. It had died as a possibility for me when I was little. So I started to introduce myself as a singer to people. Clearly not like this guy, but this is the slide that I was able to find of somebody singing. So um, I would say I was a singer, and at first it felt like a lie. You know, it felt like I was saying I was a loser or I was a starving artist, you know, because I had those things conflated. And I would tell people I was a singer, and after a while it started to feel more and more natural. And I started to actually take the actions that somebody who was a singer would have, like scheduling a show or, you know, recording a demo. And it was like magic. In three months, I got a record deal. In three months, I became part of this group called Boy Crazy. As Steve said, it was not the 80s, it was the 90s, but <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. I'll talk to Steve later. Um, so not only did that happen in three months, but then we had a number one record, like the number one record in the country, Casey Kasem, the whole thing. We knocked Whitney Houston out of the number one spot. She had been there for like 250 years with I Will Always Love You. And we were the next number one song. So for me, at that point, what became clear for me was my mission in life was to have dreams come true. Not just dreams come true, but magic being real in the world. And it wasn't just about getting a record deal. It was like that element of magic. That was what was inspiring to me. The fact that a dream was fulfilled. That's what was inspiring to me. It wasn't so much the content, it was the context of having dreams fulfilled and creating magic in the world. So I've spent the last 25 years working with people to empower them to have their dreams fulfilled. And so I want to invite you to be those people today and we'll work together to identify what is your dream 
and how to fulfill it right now, not someday, one day, which you never get to. Do you ever notice you never get to someday? You always wonder, oh, how's it going to turn out someday? This is it. This is pretty much how it turned out. So <laughs> my question to you is, what is your dream source? That's right. I didn't say dream. I said dream source, which is really what's underneath your dream. Like, what is the point of fulfilling on that goal? Kind of like with me, with the whole idea of magic being real or fulfilling dreams, that was really what my dream source was, what was underneath whatever goals that I had. So this is a term that I coined a few years ago when I started to work with people. For example, if I said to you, you know, what do you really want? And you said, well, I, you know, I want to be my own boss. I would ask you, to get to your dream source, I'd ask you, okay, well, what would be available for you if you were your own boss that isn't available for you now? That would get you looking at a deeper cut of why you have the dreams you have. Why do you have the goals that you have? I personally connected with my dream source when I was 22 and got that record deal and became a pop singer. It became really clear to me that what I was passionate about was magic. It was magic to get a record deal in three months. It was magic to have a number one record. And I've had like every dream I ever had come true. So I designed a company designed to empower people to fulfill on their dreams now. Today, you're those people. But if I look at my life, you know, I had a dream to be a pop singer. Check. I had a dream to marry a tall, dark, handsome soulmate. Check. He is cute, isn't he? <laughs> We're married 20 years this year together. I had a dream to have three children. Check. Two boys and a girl. <laughs> I know, it's magic, right? I had a dream to have my own company so I could create my own schedule. I have that. I had a dream to spend summers in Paris. Voila, we just got back from spending the month of July in Paris. And I had a dream to make a difference with people in the world. And I've been fortunate enough to be able to raise over $20 million for charity, work with thousands and thousands of people to empower them to fulfill on what matters to them. I get to make a difference in my community, with the PTA, with the neighborhood, with the school system. You know, you can really design a life that enables you to fulfill on your dreams moment by moment by moment, rather than hoping to get there someday. So my question to you is, what do you really want? And this is where there's like an interactive part here where you actually have to think, okay? <laughs> and think about what you want. Most people don't think about that. They just kind of go through life dealing with what they have versus creating what they really want. And I was working with one of my clients. I work with actors. And um, I asked him, I said, well, what do you really want, Ben? And he said, well, what I want is to be a working actor. And then I thought, well, I'd like to be managing him, but he's not one of my clients. <laughs> but he said, <laughs> But Ben said, I want to be a working actor. I said, OK, well, if you were a working actor, what would be available for you that isn't available for you? He said, well, I could own property. I said, OK, well, if you own property, then what would be there for you that you don't have available to you now? He goes, well, then I wouldn't have to worry about money. I said, OK, well, if you didn't worry about money, I mean, you can see where this is going, and I do the same thing for you. If you didn't have to worry about money, what would be there like a presence? like the essence of something, the sense of something. So it's not a physical, tangible goal. It's more like a spatial kind of thing, like what would be there? What would you have access to if you didn't have to worry about any of those things? And he said, creativity. I'd be able to be creative. And I said, well, that's your dream source. And he lit up like a little Christmas tree. And he said, that's true. That's what my whole life is about, is creativity. I said, well, you don't have to wait to win an Academy Award to be creative. You can bring creativity to your life versus hoping to get it out of life someday. And we started to brainstorm on all the different areas where he could bring creativity where he hadn't been. Like when he auditions for a role, when he goes to do a catering job, when he goes to Starbucks to buy a, a cup of coffee. There's no moment where you can't be bringing something like creativity to every interaction and every moment of your life. So he got real connected to what his creation source or his dream source really was. Now, it isn't as simple as abracadabra, which by the way, in Hebrew and or Aramaic means I create what I speak, but it does begin there. It begins with speaking it. What is your dream source? Creating that, articulating that, and then fulfilling on it right now and right now and right now by bringing it, contributing it to life versus hoping to get it out of a relationship or out of a goal or out of a circumstance.
So as you're you know, listening to this whole dream source thing, some of you might have something in mind. You might have something like, oh yeah, that's kind of my dream source. I could see that that's what inspires me. And some of you might be a little bit lost at this point. But if you ask yourself, what's your dream source? Just take a moment and look. What do you burn for? What are you passionate about? And then some of you are like, I have no idea. I have no idea what my dream source is. That's OK, too, <laughs> because I'm going to work with you. Another way to look at this is to go back in time and actually look at an early childhood moment, like your favorite moment. What was your favorite moment of life? And we all have those like silver box moments where we remember that like forever. It might have been that you were running in a park and you were present to freedom. Or maybe you were playing with dolls. You know, For some of you gentlemen out there, that might have been the case. And you were present to joy. Or maybe you were with your family, and you were present to love. Whatever that is, it's like a moment where you're not there. You kind of disappear, and it's magical. And it's dreamy. And that's what I'm calling is your dream source. So I actually want to um, work with you in the audience today and look at what your dream source might be, because you can spend your whole life wondering how it's going to turn out someday and hoping that it turns out someday. But in reality, there's just right now. There's what are you creating right now and right now and right now. There is no someday. So let me hear from some of you. What do, what do you think your dream source might be? They turned the lights up so I can actually see you. Anybody just raise your hand, and I'll repeat what you say. Anybody come up with what their dream source might be? What inspires you? What are you passionate about? Yes? To feel alive and connected. Yeah, beautiful. So aliveness and connection. That's something that you can either hope to get out of life or you can bring to life. Some things people come up with are joy or maybe you know, being inspiring. Or it could be something like self-expression or creativity, as Ben came up with. But the point is that whatever it is, you want it to be something that's not a goal, but something that is an outcome of a goal, something that becomes present out of doing that thing. It might be making a difference. It might be, could be connection. I think that's a great one, because a lot of people, that is what they want, and they seek it from something rather than bringing it to something. So that's a way of looking at it as well. You know, when my brother was dying of AIDS back in 1990, he said to me, you know, I'm pretty complete with my life. And I was really afraid he was going to die. And I said to him, I'm afraid you're going to die. He said, I am going to die. You don't have to be afraid because I'm not afraid. And I've lived a great life. I love my life. I love the people in my life. I've traveled. I've done what I wanted to do. I didn't leave anything for someday. And he turned to me and he said, but you're not doing that. And he's 15 years older than me. And I said, what do you mean? He said, when are you going to sing? I said, someday. And he said, there is no someday. And that really is the truth. There is no someday. This is it. So those of you that have dreams that you're thinking you're going to fulfill someday, I'm inviting you to take on having that be real right now. What are you actually creating right now? Are you being your dream, or are you chasing it? There are two different ways to live in life. You can wait for something to happen. You can wait for something to hopefully happen. Or you can create it right now. So the question is, what are you creating right now? Are you creating love, or are you hoping to get it from someone? Are you creating appreciation, or are you complaining that you're not appreciated enough? Whatever you want, you can actually create it, like abracadabra kind of creating, by putting it into your life versus hoping to get it out of your life. So I you know, was preparing for this talk, and I was sitting with my now 82-year-old father and my nine-year-old son, Shane, and we were sitting at my dad's house, and I was telling him about you know, the dream source topic. And he said, do you think people are going to get it? And I said, well, let's test it out on Shane. So he said to Shane, you know, Shane, what are you passionate about? What's really important to you? And Shane goes, magic. And I was like, first of all, so happy that he, magic was important to him too, like I have successfully recreated myself or something. And I said, so your life's about magic? He said, no, my life's about making magic real. And I got schooled in that moment. I was like, that's right. It isn't just about magic. It's about having it be real right now. And um, actually get people connected to their dream source by asking questions like, what do you burn for? Or asking the kind of questions that we looked at tonight. Like, if you had that goal accomplished, then what would be possible? What would be available to you? Or what are you passionate about? What, what do you burn for? 
what makes you happy, what satisfies you, what was your favorite moment. Those are questions you can use to access other people's dream source as well. And now, perhaps I'll read you a poem called Dreams by Langston Hughes. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. So I'd go a step beyond this and say, don't hold fast to dreams, but give them away. Contribute them to people, contribute them to life. If you do this, you will never be burned out. I have a very full life, but I'm not burned out. I'm not overwhelmed because it's all an expression of my dreams right now and right now with this person or that person. And you can, don't have to wait till you win an Academy Award to be fulfilled or till you get in a relationship to be loving. In fact, those things might be what attracts those kinds of results to your life. If you create being loving, that's a pretty lovable thing. So I'm inviting you to create your dreams and fulfill on them now. Be the dream you wish to realize, or borrowing from one of my heroes, be the change you wish to see. And I'd like to leave you with this question. What is your dream source? Thanks.